Hey, I'm Tommy Boschers. Thanks for watching. If you want to stay connected for more Detroit Muscle, just click the subscribe button. Today on Detroit Muscle, we get down and dirty with a junkyard axle and plop it under the rear of our drag strip caddy. Plus, we'll give the interior a grim upgrade, but what we find lying under the seat will give you chills. Now, on Detroit Muscle. Hey everybody, welcome to Detroit Muscle. We're part way through the resurrection of our Cadillac hearse here. Let's just say we're trying to get a 6,000 pound car to do what 6,000 pound cars are not supposed to do. And that is go quick down the drag strip. And we're kind of stuck in purgatory now, like kind of halfway. We've added a ton of power under the hood, a shot of nitrous, and we upgraded the transmission with a shift kit and sprinkled on a couple of other goodies like side pipes and a fuel cell. But what we haven't touched is the brakes, suspension, and rear axle. You can tell that all these are engineered for the rider, not the driver. So we're going to cure all those illnesses today and get started back here. With the rear axle up under our hearse, it has some good going for it, but not a whole lot. First off, it does have a factory pause in it. And I would imagine it's in there because of this scenario. Can you imagine this old car in kind of a off the beaten path on a soft grassy spot? Absolutely. So having that pause would be an added benefit. Now with our gear ratio that's in this thing, it's what I call airplane gears. It's real long legged. If we were gonna stretch it out on the interstate, it'd be perfectly fine. But since we're gonna take this thing down the drag strip, well, some deeper gears are in order. And there's not really any aftermarket support, so we can't swap those out. Next thing is the brakes. This thing's got drums and shoes. We're looking for something a little bit more efficient. And you know, swapping over to a disc setup can be pricey and labor intensive. So this has got to go. Well, I like to give Tommy a hard time and tell him if you want to fix up a GM, put some Ford parts in it. Well, we're doing that again today, but instead of a nine inch rear, we're actually doing a 9.75 rear out of a first gen Expedition. I know what you're thinking, why a truck rear? Well, there's a lot going on for this thing. It's got that big ring gear, it's got a pause unit, 373 gears already in here from the factory, and massive 13 inch disc brakes out back that will blow those drum brakes away. There are some drawbacks though. It's got several mounts that we're gonna have to cut off. This was a four link with a pan hard rod, and it's got purchase here for coil springs. We're probably gonna have to cut most of this out of the way, but for a $200 investment, I'll do a little torching and welding. We're using our oxyacetylene torch to do the heavy cutting. This is a tool we don't use that often in the shop, but it's definitely something handy to have around. With the brackets cut out of the way, we'll grind down the leftovers with our four and a half inch disc. The goal here is to get the majority of the metal removed. Then we can follow that up with the flapper wheel to smooth it out. Looks like you're making some pretty good progress there, bud. Yeah, no thanks to you. Well, I appreciate all your contributions, and since you're all gussied up, I need you to whack them pads off. <sighs> Doop -doop. All right. After getting this thing skint back, it's ready to find its new home. Recycling our old bracket and some hardware makes locating this thing a walk in the park. From the factory, our old Cadillac came with these little rubber bumpers that were here on the top and bottom side of the leaf spring. They were designed to dampen and control vibrations for better ride quality. But with the purpose that we're going with this old big hearse, that's not necessarily good because that would cause some deflection. So them things are hitting the trash can. With that said, we've got the axle sitting pretty much where it's going to live, but we still got to dial in the exact location. We've got to measure it side to side, 
make sure it's centered in the car and then also set the pinion angle. But we can't do that second one yet because we want to make sure that the car sitting on the ground, the suspension completely compressed and sitting at ride height. Not going to be able to do that for a while, so we might as well move on to getting the rest of our suspension and brakes installed. Up next, a suspension setup that will shockingly improve grip on the drag strip. Our big block caddy is going to make a significant torque number and with us taking this thing down the track, we want it to have the best passing review as possible. So what that means is we need all the traction that we can get. Now normally when people think about traction, they think about the back side of the car with a massive slick, when in all reality, up front is a truck load of it. What I'm referring to is weight. If we can get some of what's up here to shift back there, whenever we smash on a skinny pedal, well that'll do us some good. The way we're planning to do it is relatively economical and that is with some drag racing shocks. But one slight snag is they don't make a direct application for a 76 hearse. Can you believe it? Now there's really no need in it. We're going to get that old one out and we're going to make something happen. A little bit of seafoam deep creep will help penetrate that rusty shock hardware. And Tommy's favorite tool coupled with a ratcheting wrench. And the hard part's done. And underneath the lower mount comes out with a single bolt. Those old front shocks come out a whole lot easier than I was anticipating, and for the any of you guys who've had to wrestle them things out, you know what I mean. Now up front, we're going to be running a set of the 9010 Lakewood Industry shocks. These will give us the maximum amount of lift whenever we smash on that gas pedal to plant that back side of the hearse. Now out back, we're going to be using a set of their 5050s, and this is what those numbers mean. A 9010 shock extends rather quickly while the compression stroke is much slower. A 50-50 compresses and extends at a similar rate with both actions. So when we leave the starting line, we want the car to lift in the front while the rear compresses a bit to load the rear suspension. Then while moving down the track, the front will slowly start to come back down and this allows the car to maintain traction as we make our pass. Without this action, the tires won't bite as hard and we can simply just smoke them coming off the line. Let's get started on the front. Now, looking at these things side by side, they're basically the same except for this end. So we're gonna press this sleeve out, try to get it in there, and then we can move forward. The Arbor Press sure does make this task a whole lot easier. If you didn't wanna reuse this old stuff, you could use a piece of tubing but you would have to make sure that it had the proper OD and ID. But since these old shocks are junk, it just makes sense to reuse them. That got it. Now this upgrade has been straightforward and now we just need to cinch everything down. On this upper mount, the rule of thumb is you want to tighten this nut until that lower grommet is squished out enough that it's the same diameter as that washer. To get these rear shocks up under the Cadillac, I'm going to have to do some modifying. What I've hit is it's about two inches shorter than that factory one. As far as the compression length, it's really close. It's only about a quarter inch or so off. That's not worth fooling with. So I'm gonna to have to come up with that extra two inches somewhere. Let's do a little measuring to see where we're at. We're at 19 inches. This isn't gonna work. The suspension is loaded, meaning it's compressed, and our new shock is 18 and three quarter fully extended. So that means we would have no out travel or down travel. So we got to determine whether we want to move this one up or that one down. And that one there is going to be the one we're going to cut on. In situations like this, we could make a new shock mount, but since the factory tab is welded onto the frame, it's just as easy for us to cut them off 
and move them down. And since we're gonna be putting this thing under a lot of stress, we made a couple of little gussets. And all that's left is to burn them in. The rest is pretty straightforward, just like this old caddy is going to be when it hits the drag strip. Coming up, how bad are the brakes on this old caddy? Well, let's just say we found a replacement that's plug and play. We're making great headway on our Cadillac hearse. We got drag shocks in it on all four corners. We've got a rear end installed. We haven't set the pinion angle yet, but like I mentioned earlier, we're gonna wait till the car's on the ground to do that. Uh, but as for the brakes, they need some attention. As you can see, these rotors are very rusty. Uh, this isn't just surface rust. They're pretty heavily pitted. This thing sat in a junkyard for who knows how long, several years probably. Uh, we may be able to get those resurfaced, but it's really not worth it. Just wanna replace them. And besides, we wanna do an upgrade. As for the pads, well, they're not in great shape either. Uh, the friction material is worn almost all the way down and the backing plates are rusty. So we decided to go to EBC Brakes for one of their pad and rotor kits. This is their Stage 5 Super Street kit, which includes dimpled and slotted rotors that are corrosion protected with a Geomet coating. As for the pads, well, these are the yellow stuff. You've seen us use these before. This is a full race pad that's also capable of street use. It's got great bite from cold, so it's ideal for your daily driver that you take to the track from time to time. If we're spending money to upgrade our rear, this is a great place to do it. All right, let's see what we got here. All right, let's get these pads off of here. They're actually not as worn as I thought they were, probably 50%, but they are pretty rusty. Uh, this slide is loose. Let's check the other one. Uh, that one's frozen, but we may be able to free it up, but we need to check the piston to get it compressed. No, the piston's frozen in the caliper. This is very common, especially on junkyard rears. Uh, we could probably rebuild the caliper, but we've got a better solution. So this is a Duralast remanufactured caliper that we got from AutoZone made to meet or exceed OE specifications. Uh, this thing's completely rebuilt, all new parts, already lubed up, ready to go on the vehicle, and we even upgraded the hose as well because our hoses were already trashed, which is, again, typical with junkyard rear ends. So this is what we're gonna use to fix up our brakes. We're gonna have a brand new brake system here in the rear of our caddy. We'll slide our new rotor on. Then we can remove the old clips and replace them with the new ones that came with our calipers. We'll slather on a little disc brake lube and install the new caliper. Another cool thing about these Duralast calipers is not only do they have new brake caliper bolts, but they also have a new banjo bolt pre-installed with the copper gaskets. So all you need to do is install your hose and tighten it down. You're good to go. Well, since we switched to disc brakes, we're going to have to redo our lines back here. I'm going to Go ahead and mount this hose on the frame, make some new hard lines, and once I get that terminated, this will be ready for some wheels and tires. One thing that you may run into if you're doing an odd duck conversion like we are on that Cadillac, as far as the rear, is finding a set of wheels that's gonna match front and rear and the attitude of your ride. Luckily for us, we found this jewel. This is a stock wheel that would come on an F-150, but it would be the spare. This is Ford's attempt to save some cash. Now, like I mentioned, we wanted the front and rear to match. Summit had exactly what we needed. This is a US wheel that they offer as their Rat Rod series. And with a splash of color on these, maybe some pinstripes and even some chrome lug nuts, it'd church it up a bit. Now I just need a clean scuff and we'll be ready to paint.
We're going to spray these down with some wax and grease remover because of the potential contamination that may be on them. Then a little hand jiving with a red pad will prep the surface for our paint. And one more wipe down and she's ready to go. I'm going to spray on two coats of Summit Racing's Jet Black Base Coat and then two coats of Clear. I want those wheels to be as shiny as a new penny. We're going to mix up a few ounces of paint, add our reducer, and a small splash of hardener. You want to make sure to mix this thoroughly. And now it's ready for trigger time. Painting wheels can be a little complicated because of all the curves and opposing angles. The trick here is to make sure everything is covered with a nice, even coat. After a few minutes to let this flash off, we're ready to start our second coat of black. Once that's dried, it's time to spray on our shiny. Now we've got to let our goodies in the booth dry for a little while so that we can handle them. And while they're doing their thing, I'm going to tell you about the rear tires that we're going to be running up under our Cadillac. I went to Summit Racing and picked up a set of M&H Racemaster DOT approved tires. These are a 275-50 R17 that are 10 and a half inches wide. They're going to fill up that steel wheel we're going to be running and it's going to look pretty killer when we're all said and done. Now the next thing I'm going to do with this tire machine is add my pinstripe. It's time to do some painting. Now I know most people don't use them for this, but this rotating deck is going to help me. Now it's a nice looking piece. Now we just got to get it up on the car. Up next, we dig out the seat in our Cadillac hearse to make room for some racing buckets. But what we found along the way was an eerie surprise. Mm. Well, this journey of us resurrecting this old Cadillac hearse has been quite a unique situation. And I have to say, I'm so glad that we're getting dangerously close to the end of it, primarily because I'm running out of clever and creepy sayings to describe this thing kind of killing me. <laughs> well, the one thing we haven't touched would have to be the living room here. And it leaves a lot to be desired, although it is pretty comfy and retro looking. Uh, we need to upgrade the dash a little bit, maybe with some gauges so we can keep an eye on that engine. And then also our seat here. It is cushy and it looks cool, but it's not going to provide the support we need, especially driving down the drag strip. So this thing has to go. I can get this couch out of here and maybe I'll find some treasures between the cushions. I already found some treasure, and it wasn't coins between the cushions. It's in part of a latex exam glove box, and it's definitely got some age to it. Can't wait to see what else we find under there. I didn't find any coins between the cushions like I thought I would, but there's plenty of treasure to be had here under the seat. Now, earlier I found that box that was for latex gloves. So check this out, an actual latex glove that's been under here for I don't know how long, and I don't even like touching this with my gloves on. So, uh, and then you got a flathead screwdriver, a pair of pliers, don't know what that's for. And then there's several flowers in here. You can pretty much guess what these were for. Anyway, I'm gonna leave this mess for Tommy to clean up. He's the one that loves this car so much. 
I am rather fond of this old thing, so I had to show the interior some loving. We went to Summit Racing and got a pair of their universal sport seats. They have black cloth on them, and that's going to look as snazzy as a brand new tuxedo inside of there. But before we go to fabricating, I got to do some house cleaning. I found some goodies as well. You guys check this out. This is from an old funeral home from Greenville, Tennessee. And it appears to be some aspirin and some smelling salts. Hmm. Now to get our seat mounted requires a few pieces of metal. The manufacturing process is simple. Some flat bar, some tubing, and some metal gluing. I had to fab up these little feet that I'm gonna bolt to the bottom of our seat tracks. Once I get them tight, this thing's ready to go in the car. With our seats snugged up, we'll complement our interior with an impressive tack and move on to the steering wheel. You know, sometimes people can feel like they're chained to bad decisions, but when they're chrome-plated, it makes them all right. This buttons up our caddy hearse. The next time you see this rolling coffin, it'll be speeding down the drag strip with deadly speed. You can follow along and catch our day at the track at PowerNationTV.com.